member of APC. Uh, this motion is brought under urgent importance under, under, eight, under eight rule four. I want to seek uh, order eight rule, rule four. Rule five, oh, order eight rule five. And I want the leave of the house to allow me to take this all important motion, which is the need to stop the issuance of airstrip license to private individuals and organizations in the country as a matter of national security concern. I so move, Mr. Speaker. I'm from Kasana State. I rise to second the motion, first leg of the motion, ably moved by my brother, Honorable Sleban Gumi, the brand new APC member. I so order, please. second order, Mr. Speaker. Order, please. Sub rule two, and I wish to read. A matter of urgent public importance shall, emphasis on the word shall, seek to address any of the following. Immediate threats to lives and properties. If the matter is allowed to persist and not addressed immediately, it may lead to breakdown of law and order, cause serious damage to or total destruction of federal government owned or controlled infrastructure, a national monument or a world heritage center. Three, any matter considered to be urgent by the speaker. Mr. Speaker, the issues raised any other matter considered by the speaker. I'm not shying away from that. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, the, the issue raised by our colleague is very germane. It's necessary, it's important. But the other question is, is it urgent as to come under order eight, rule five? And I think that we actually need to consider this issue so that we take only matters that are urgent and in compliance with our rules under this order. We have motion on notice, we have other means of bringing these matters before the parliament, but we observe that we are overloading order eight rule five. I would therefore pray that my learned colleague should put us on notice so that we will also have the opportunity of reading through his arguments and then prepare ourselves to respond to this motion. This motion does not fall under that order, sir. Thank you. Thank you to have read. It gives the speaker the latitude. And I'm sure we have been taking similar kind of uh, motions in the past that are not too urgent, but uh, uh, with the discretion of the speaker, once in a while we do that. And I think today, <clears throat> because it's a very symbolic day for us, I would want to graciously, uh, graciously accept that. And I know why the leader is not too happy for this uh, motion to uh, take place. So please, um, you're not, uh, your, your, your point of order is noted, but uh, we'll go ahead and put the second question. Depending on the outcome, we'll decide whether we'll take it immediately or take it the, uh, tomorrow, okay? So those is uh, any second to the second motion? Honorable Amborura. I rise up to second the motion that has been Say aye. Those against you say nay. The eyes have it. Honorable, please proceed. Yeah, Confirm the approval of an airstrip for a religious based organization in Ota Ogun State. Recall that in September 2014, a prominent religious leader was linked with a private jet used to convey $9.3 million in cash to South Africa for purchase of arms. The private jet was seized by the South African authorities, which has two, two people, Nigerian and an Israeli, on board. Concerned that currently experience, uh, the current uh, experience of uh, security challenge that Nigeria is facing through illegal importation, proliferation of firearms and ammunition, importation of illicit hard drugs, coupled with the inability of our security agencies to pinpoint the source of supply of weapons to insurgents, kidnappers, and separatists that have massacred thousands of Nigerians across the country. Worried that granting airstrip to private individuals and organizations would aid illegal importation of firearms and hard drugs into the country, thus heightening insurgency, kidnapping, banditry, and other vices that are seriously affecting the socio-economic development of the, of the country. The House resolves to 
One, call on the Ministry of Aviation and Aerospace to stop issuance of airstrip licenses to private individuals and organizations. And also withdraw approvals already granted to private individuals and organizations with a view to safeguarding national security. Two, urge the committees on aviation and legislative compliance to ensure compliance. I so move, Mr. Speaker. This is supposed to be the duty of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. So we need to even look, look at it from that angle. The approval given by the minister is even defective and is not meant to be. Because the approval for airstrip airport is supposed to come from Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, who is domiciled with the power to do so. It's not domiciled at the ministry. It is after the approval of it is after the approval of the NCAA that the minister can give such an approval. So even giving that kind of approval is, a, is an abuse of power. So I want this house to please see how we can actually look at all this. There are so many things going on in ministry, in the, I mean, that industry right now that we really need to look into. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. The Nigeria Civil Aviation uh, Authority is under the Ministry of uh, Aviation. So by implication, we, I want to believe perhaps the minister has uh, done the due diligence by accepting all the, um, I mean collecting all the necessary approvals before he made the announcement. But however, since the resolution of this motion or the prayer is to order the Committee on Aviation to investigate on this matter, I think uh, they can also take note of that particular aspect to ensure that in the first place whether due process has been followed or not. So I think we can take a second to the motion. Or have we done so? Honorable uh, Namdi, in support of this motion, she say aye. Those against, she say nay. That is of it. This motion is referred to the Committee on uh, Aviation for Further Legislative Action. Establishment of Federal College of Health Sciences, Gaya, Kano State, and for related matters, HB31, and a bill for an act to amend the Federal Medical Centers Act and establish Federal Medical Center Ecolaikiti, Ekiti State, and for related matters, HB1037, and finally, a bill for an act to amend the Agricultural Research Council Act. Cap A, laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2024, to make provisions for the establishment of Federal College of Agricultural Technology. Opialu Ojapo, Benue State, to contribute to the development of Nigeria through training of qualitative manpower in agriculture by adequate exposure to sound theoretical background, practical farm and field demonstrations, and for later matters, SB212 be read for the third time. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Third reading of the following bills, HB1598, HB642, anyway, with the fourth order to as well, please. HB31 and HB 1037. I so second. Those, is a, those against you say nay. That is of it. Clark. For the establishment of Federal College of Agricultural Technology, Opialu, Ojapo, Benue State, to contribute to the development of Nigeria through training of qualitative manpower in agriculture by adequate exposure to sound theoretical background practical farming and field demonstration and for later matters, SB 212 be read a second time. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Minority Leader, please. That a bill for an act to alter the provisions of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, to carve out Nasarawa Egon Federal Constituency from Akwanga Nasarawa Egon Wamba Federal Constituency and other related matters be read for the second time. I'll so move, Mr. Speaker, sir. Thank you. Uh, but it's... Any seconder? 
the chairman of the committee of deputies, Honorable Leko. Our people of Ugele North, Ugele South, and Udu, I am from Delta State. I rise to move the motion for reconsideration of outstanding bills from preceding assembly. The House notes that National Broadcasting Commission Act Amendment Bill 2024, HB 1816, and Federal University Wukuru Establishment Bill 2024, HB 13. 8.2. The House notes that pursuant to Order 12 Root 17 of the Standing Orders, the House may, upon being regazetted or circulated, reconsider the committee of the, in the Committee of the Whole without commencing the novel, the bills, whose report were pre was presented by the Committee before consideration, passed by the House and forwarded to the Senate for concurrence, for which no concurrence was made or negative, passed by the Senate and forwarded to the House, for which no concurrence was made or negative, or passed by the preceding Assembly and forwarded to the President for assent, but for which assent or withholding thereof was not communi communicated before the end of the term of the preceding Assembly. The House also notes that the affirmation bills were passed by the preceding Assembly and forwarded to the President for assent, but for which assent or withholding thereof was not communicated before the end of the term of the last assembly. Aware that the bills were read for the first time as HB 1816 and 1382, the House resolves to recommit the bills to the Committee of the Whole for consideration. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Kelechi. My name is Honorable Kelechi Mugu. I represent the people of Ichie Obama constituency I'm from River State, the treasure base of the nation. I rise to second the motion moved by my colleague. I so second. Those in support of this motion. Legislative action. The twelfth order of the day is a motion on the need to address flooding and gully erosion, devastating communities in building KB, Calgo, Bunza, Federal Constituency. Standing in the name of Honorable Ibrahim Mohammed. Honorable Mohammed is hereby invited to move the motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, I'm from Kebi State. I rise to move a motion on the need to address flooding and gully erosion devastating communities in Brindley Kebi Kalgobunza Federal Constituency. The House notes the growing impact of climate change, which has adversely affected and impacted environments across the globe, resulting in environmental and socio-economic challenges. Also notes that flooding and gully erosion are exacerbated by increased rainfall, poor environmental practices, inadequate or inefficient drainage systems due to lack of preparedness by relevant government agencies to respond to climate change projections and poor waste disposal practices. Nasarawa 1 and 2, Digi, Kola, Terasa, Badaria, Zauro, Ambursa, Raha, Bunzat, Angaladima, Medehini, and Sabombini have been severely impacted by recurring floods and expanding gully erosion annually, leading to the loss of valuable farmlands that are crucial for agriculture and the local economy. Also concerned that the floods and erosion have caused displacement of families and trauma in affected communities, leading to socioeconomic disruption. Aware that the communities are currently grappling with economic challenges due to the loss of essential services, lack of government intervention, infrastructural destruction, and impended transportation of goods exacerbating the crisis. Also aware that these communities are predominantly agrarian experiencing ongoing losses due to the inability to transport produce, coupled with the growing encroachment of gully erosion on their farmlands, which threatens future livelihoods. Cognizant of the need to address the gully erosion to alleviate residents' suffering, reclaim productive farmland, boost economic activities, and restore the residents' confidence in government and environmental protection, the House resolves to urge the Ecological Fund Office and other related agencies to conduct an impact assessment of the affected communities and provide necessary funding for a robust remediation plan to mitigate the effects of flood and gully erosion. 
2 also urged the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to immediately provide relief materials to the affected communities in Binikebi, Kogo, and Bunza Federal Constituency. Lastly, mandate the Committees on Environment, Works, and Water Resources to make adequate provisions for the construction of proper drainage systems in Binikebi, Kogo, Bunza Federal Constituency, Kebi State, and the implementation of erosion control measures in the 2025 budget estimates. I so move. <laughs> uh, right, honorable speaker, honorable members, my name is Honorable Mweke Felix Uche. I represent Elementai, Yubo uh, Federal Constituency uh, from River State. I remain Tijani Kaode Ismail. I represent the good people of Ifeludun, Ofa, or Yubo Federal Constituency. I'm from Kwara State. I rise to second the motion, heavily moved by Honorable Amos Governor Mugaji. I so second. This motion should say aye. Those against you say nay. That is it. This motion is referred to the committees on land transport, Federal Capital Territory Administration, health institutions for further legislative action. The 14th order of the day is a motion on the need to address the secretive employment in the Federal Civil Service, standing in the name of Honorable Kola Ole Davison Akilayo. Uh, Honorable Akilayo is hereby invited to move the motion. I think, uh, Honorable, you have indicated that we should step down this bill, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. This bill is stepped down by the leave of the House. Thank you, sir. The 15th order of the day, Enugu East, issues of federal consistency from Enugu State. Mr. Speaker, the, uh, on the motion is on the call for resolution, uh, relocation of local uh, independence and electoral commission, INEC local government offices to neutral venues or locations. Mr. Speaker, the House notes that the Section 157 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, guarantees the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, unhindered autonomy and independent to conduct elections. Also notes, the House also notes that the Independent National Electoral Commission has a critical role in conducting free, fair, and credible elections. The House further notes that the majority of the INEX local government offices are currently situated within local government headquarters or otherwise. Further note that the majority uh, further aware, the House are aware that this is potentially hampering and compromising the independence of INEC in the conduct of elections. The House observes that this possibility exposes INEC to Manipulations are, are controlled by in, interest groups, particularly in areas dominated by a single political party. Concerned that this impedes INEC impartiality as enshrined in Section 6 of the Electoral Act 2022. Concerns of the need to maintain public trust and confidence in the electoral process. The House resolves as follows to urge INEC to relocate its local government offices to secure, to secure neutral locations and make adequate provisions in the 2025 budget estimates to accommodate the projects. The, secondly, they ask man, to mandate the Committee on Electoral Matters to liaise with Internet National Electoral Commission and other relevant stakeholders to ensure compliance and report within four weeks for further legislative action. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and so move. Honorable Blessing, can you tell us where we are and the second if Amendment, you are Mr. in agreement with this Amendment, motion? Mr. Speaker. Speak up. Amendment, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My name is Blessing Onyeche Onu, and I replies to second this very important motion. Which is the motion? What, what motion is that? They call, they call for relocation of Independence National Electoral Commission. I so second. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Those in support of this motion should say, I have it. This motion is uh, referred to the Committee on Electoral Matters for further legislative action. 
the 16th order of the day is a motion on funding of exploration for data in the solid mineral space to unlock mineral deposits and enhance foreign exchange earnings. Standing in the name of Honorable Ojo Sunde Makanjola, Honorable Ojo is hereby invited to move the motion. Thank you, Honorable Sunde Makanjola, Honorable Representing Ogoluwa, Sulele Federal Constituency, and from Oyo State. The House notes. Um, I stand this afternoon to make a motion funding of exploration of data in the solid mineral space to unlock mineral deposits and enhance foreign exchange earning. The House notes that the Nigeria is going through a difficult economy for us with dwindling foreign exchange inflow of negative effects on Naira, Naira strength. As it was described in recent times, as one of the worst performing in Africa alongside Ethiopia. Also note that the Nigeria has been a mono economy with high de dependency, dependency on oil and gas. Now with, an, with the energy transition and departure from the use of six fuel, the country may begin to experience a decline in revenue from the sector. Further note that Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation Limited estimated $400 million on frontier exploration annually in Nigeria and in Nigeria and in 2021. NNPC spent $20 billion Nera in seven months on frontier exploration alone. Aware that Nigeria is blessed with abundant resources and that during the colonial era and pre-independence period, Nigeria's main income was solid minerals. The KPMG, Nigeria Mining Sector Brief, on June 2024, listed the potential of a number of minerals as follows. One, coal, as a reserve estimate of about 2.73 billion metric tons and proven reserve of 639 million tons. Two, bitumen, as an estimated 42.47 billion tons. Three, barite, as an estimated 23 million metric tons. Four, lead zinc have been observed along a belt of approximately 30 to 50 kilometer wide stretching for about 560 kilometer in length from Ibonyi State through Beni, Bauchi, Adamawa, Taraba, Nasarawa, and Plateau State. Four, limestone, estimated reserve of 10.6 billion tons across, of, across 14 states. Six, iron ore has an estimated reserve of about 3 billion tons. Seven, gold has estimated reserve of about 21.37 metric tons, valued at $1 billion at, as at second quarter of 2023. Conscious that these deposits of explored to a bankable dat data level we bring an enormous foreign exchange inflow that we contribute significantly to our nation's GDP. Resolve to urge the federal government to A, appropriate the sum of $500 million or its equivalent for exploration as a special intervention in the solid mineral sector in the forthcoming 2025 budget estimate. Two, exploit bilateral agreement on a government to government level to get the required expertise as affordable rate for the exploration service and support technology transfer. Two, 
mandate the Committee on Appropriation, Finance, and Solid Mirror to ensure compliance and report within four weeks legislative week for further legislative action. I so move. Thank you. Any second? Name is Mweke Felix Uche. I represent Eleme Oyibo. Thai, Federal Consulency and from River State. My amendment is on A, appropriate the sum of $500 million or its equivalent. How did he arrive at $500 million, sir? So, but, but then can you repeat what you said? My amendment is on A, appropriate the sum of $500 million or its equivalent for exploration as a special intervention fund. How did they arrive at $500 million? It is specific. So I will... I agree with you. So what, what, what will be the... The amendment should the be... The amendment. To make adequate provision for exploration. To make... To make adequate provision. Adequate provision. Any yes, seconder to this? 